Hey, I'm Arsene, this is the episode 13 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. If you haven't watched the last episodes, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to host your multiplayer game online so other players can play your game. But before getting into this specific step, I want to talk about hosting in general. Um, I think it's important to understand how it goes roughly, especially considering that the steps will most likely change over time. Hosting a multiplayer game is separated in three parts, roughly. There's the domain and DNS, there's the not just hosting, and there's the database. So those three things are entirely separated. Well, most of the time entirely separated and are provided by different service providers. For example, for Raining Chain, the MMORPG I'm currently developing, um, the domain and DNS are handled by the company Namecheap. The hosting is handled by the company Eroku and the database is handled by Compose.io. So there's absolutely nothing linking those three companies. Okay, so now I'm gonna explain roughly what the, the three things um, do. So let's get started with the Node.js hosting. So the relation between you and Eroku, how it, it's gonna work roughly is, um, you're gonna say to Eroku, hey, I got this um, application over here. So everything inside your project, so the client, non-module, app, package, you're gonna ship that to Eroku and you're gonna ask Eroku to run the server. So the, the server will be run on their website at app.id, so this will change the, it's a random ID that it's gonna give you at erokuapp.com. So the server that will run over here will be exactly the same than on your local host. So exactly the same, except that it's gonna have a fancy um, URL over there. Now, most likely you don't want your website to be something at erokuapp.com because that's not really convenient. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go um, and buy a domain. So this is how it's gonna work. So for example, I personally bought the domain rainingchain.com via Namecheap. So on Namecheap, you can say, hey, I want to buy this domain over here. And then after that, that's the DNS part. You're gonna set the website rainingchain.com. So every request that goes to rainingchain.com is actually redirected to this website over here. So one very important thing to understand is that this part over here, there is absolutely no logic. There's nothing running, it's just setting files. So you set a bunch of files. So no JavaScript there, it's just settings. And it redirects to the Eroku server that has all the logic. So that's where your real server is. And that's pretty much it. And finally, there is the database. So the database is entirely separated from that. And um, after creating an account on um, Compose.io, you're gonna get like a URL path. So for example, right now we were using localhost this slash my game, but after creating your account, it's gonna give you another path. So the path Compose IO could send you is something like this. So MongoDB, username, password, um, link to the actual database, the port, and then the name of your database. So it's gonna be roughly like that. And what you're gonna do is instead of using this in your application, so saying, hey, I want to connect to localhost this, you're gonna just copy paste that, place it there, and it should work exactly like before. So another thing to understand right there is that uh, I named Namecheap, Eroku, and Compose.io, but there are a lot of other providers with different pricing. Um, so you, you could go, for example, for GoDaddy instead of Namecheap, you could go for Azure instead of Eroku, and so on. So I, I'm just naming the ones I'm personally using for my MMORPG. So one thing about Node.js hosting is that you need a host that supports WebSockets because our game uses WebSockets. And for the database, obviously, we'll need a host that supports MongoDB because our database is MongoDB. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is to show you how to host on Eroku. So keep in mind that those steps will only apply for Eroku. If you want to use another host, then um, this video will be kind of useless for you. So Eroku have a free tier, so you can host your application for free on their website. However, the application will not run 24 seven, so there is going to be a, a cooldown time. Uh, but obviously you can pay and host all the time if you want. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to create your um, Eroku account on eroku.com. So I'll put the link in the description. 
So after that, you can go to this um, page of getting started on Heroku with Node.js. It will have all the information. I'm basically just going through them real quick and maybe point out some pitfalls with the tutorial. So I'm ready. So the first thing you want to do is like they say, install the tool belt for your operating system. So the tool belt, what it has is it um, adds the software Heroku that has a bunch of function like logging in, creating a new application, shutting down application and stuff like that. It also comes with um, Git, with, which is a software for version control. So you may or may not already have a Git and you don't really need to know how Git works in order to um, develop and push on Heroku. Um, there's maybe like two comments and they're pretty simple. Okay, so after installing the tool belt, you just continue. Now what they recommend you is to clone their um, template application. I'm personally gonna skip that um, because we already have an application. And then they, they tell you to create your error. Do Heroku create. Actually, one thing you need to do first is git init. So you go in, in the um, to your project, you type git init and it's gonna create a, a git project on your folder. So if you go over here, you should have a dot git. After that, you will want to create your Heroku application with Heroku create. So it's gonna create your application and this over here, the frozen allos um, thing, this is the ID and this is the path to your application. Like I was saying, like it's the ID dot Heroku app dot com. Now, before being able to actually send our project to Heroku, there are a few um, fixes we will need to do. So first of all, in our um, server, we use a database. So if we keep that, so A, use the local host database, it's not gonna work, obviously. So I'm gonna remove really quickly all the database related stuff. So we are, no, our application will no longer be linked with a database. Um, obviously this is temporary. So over here, for example, is valid password. Instead of doing this, we are simply gonna return this. So we are always gonna accept the, uh, a password without even checking in the database. Is username taken? It will always be false. And add username, it's gonna do nothing. There we go. So basically we never use the database. I could put them all in comments if you want. There we go. Now, one very important thing when hosting online is to know what are the dependencies because we have our code, but we are also using codes made by other libraries. For example, we are using the, the library Express over here, and we are also using the library Socket.io. So those are our two dependencies. There's also MongoJS that would normally need to be in our dependency list, but um, we are not using the database for now. So Express and Socket.io are our two dependencies. And if you remember correctly, we had something called a package.json. And this is the package um, Heroku will be looking for our dependencies. So if you don't put your dependencies over here, um, Heroku will not be able to, to load Express. And Express will simply not be in your project and you will not be able to run your application. So it's very important that every time you do a require, you put it over there. Now, um, we do have a, one of the require over here. So require HTTP. So HTTP is a built-in um, module. So it's part of Node.js. You don't need to, to include it. Basically, anything that you um, did npm install needs to be part of the dependency package. So there are other few things we will need to change with our package.json for Heroku to be able to, to run our server. So one of them is we need to define the engine. So we are using nod4.1.x. Um, it can change, but personally, this is what I'm using. So that's what I'm gonna put. And um, I think that's, oh yeah, yeah, the, the script. We also need to specify what script we are using. Uh, we want to run when the server starts. So you need to put start not app.js. So let's just save. Now, another thing we'll need to change is the port use. So right now we were using the port 2000. So every time we wanted to access something, we were doing like local OS 2000. Um, with Heroku, it's a bit different. We cannot use the port we want. We need to use the port um, defined in this variable. So process.env.port. So by magic, this will have the, the right port. And 
If you want, you can also put or 2000. So th this is most likely used for what's called when developing. So when the port is not online, because when you want to test your application, you still want it to be able to run without having to define the port. So anyway, just put this over here. So it's going to listen to the Heroku ports when you're on Heroku. And if it's not defined, it's going to run on the default 2000. So I think now we are pretty um, ready. So what we want to do next is go to your application on Heroku, then click on your application, click on deploy, and it's going to tell you what to do um, next. So we did the login, we created our version control folder, we linked Heroku with the um, version control software. Th this was done automatically by doing our Heroku creates. And then the next step is to add stuff to our version control folder and then send the data from the folder to Heroku. So this is how it works. So we add stuff with the git add function. Commit is just like making it official and then send everything to Heroku. Now, one thing to understand about the version control, so the git thing, is that we don't want to include the not module inside our version control. Um, so if you remember correctly, the not module is everything related with our Express, Socket, IO, and MongoDB. So you, we don't want to send that data to Heroku. Even though Heroku does need it, we are already specifying it in our package. And Heroku already has like a, a system for fetching those files. So if you want to be quick and update your server quickly, you want Heroku to use like the preloaded files that they have about Express and Socket IO and only send the data related with your personal server. So everything inside the client. So long story short, we don't want to include not the not module inside our Git folder. And when I say um, include in the folder, it's not actually include this folder over here. It's a bit more complex than that. But anyway, so the way to tell the version control software to not include the non module is with a file called the git in your so this over here. And inside that file, you can just specify what folder you want to exclude. So for example, not module. So that that would be the files we want to ignore in a more complex um, project. You might, if you, you compile software, for example, you may not want to include the source, so only include the, the compiled softwares. But in our case, um, we're going to make it really easy and just ignore the null module, but include everything else. Now, one thing that could happen is that you may have problem creating this file if you're on Windows. So, um, because you cannot like have, because this file over here has no name. So what I do instead is one, one thing you can do is cr name it, for example, a.txt. And then over here, so in your folder, you can do move a.txt and rename it to git in your. So for some reason on Windows, renaming is called moved. So if you do that, it will successfully rename the file with dot git in your. So I think we are finally ready. So the only thing left is to add stuff to our version control software with git add. Then we want to commit. So just make it official. And then we want to push our server to the Heroku server. So send everything in the version control folder to the Heroku um, server. So after deploying, what you want to do is to type Heroku log. So this is probably the most useful um, command. And it's going to tell you if there is um, problems or not. So if everything works, you should see server started um, starting from up. And then you can simply go to this over here. So this is the, so the website where your application will be hosted. There we go. Then you can type your username. If you remember correctly, we are not using a database. So any password and username will be fine. And you can play the game. And I will see it's also going to work with um, different accounts. So it's really multiplier. And you can share that with anyone in the world and they can play your game. So I guess that will be pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. So see ya.